In several of my climate-related videos, I've used charts from the University of Maine Climate Reanalyzer to illustrate various consequences of climate change. Since some of you may have wondered exactly what the University of Maine Climate Reanalyzer is and how it works, this video provides that information. The University of Maine Climate Reanalyzer was developed to make weather and climate data readily available by just about anyone. It does this by combining a wide array of climate and weather data sets and by using weather models to extrapolate from regions where actual data are available to parts of the globe where no data has been collected. This is necessary because as we go back in time, actual weather data becomes sparser. For example, since data from weather satellites became available, we have detailed weather data from pretty much everywhere on the planet. But before the era of weather satellites, our weather data came mainly from land-based weather stations and from data recorded by ships at sea. This left large areas of the planet without actual weather measurements. The Climate Reanalyzer uses weather models based on well understood physical principles to extrapolate from areas with existing weather data to areas where there is no actual data available. The second feature of the Climate Reanalyzer that makes it so useful to the public is that it uses all this information to prepare and present charts and images that are easy for the average person to absorb and understand. This chart shows daily surface air temperature values for the entire world from 1979 to the present. It combines data from satellites, radio songs, and surface temperature measurements and averages that data to obtain daily values. You can see three dashed lines on the chart. The middle dashed line is the mean of global temperature data for the 20 year period between 1979 and the year 2000. The upper dashed line represents the mean plus two standard deviations, while the lower dashed line represents the mean minus two standard deviations. From this reanalyzer chart, it is easy to see that since 1979, our climate has been warming. If the climate were stable and not warming, 95% of the yearly temperature lines should lie between the bottom dashed line and the top dashed line, and there would be essentially as many years below the mean as above the mean. But clearly there are more years above the mean than below the mean, and there already have been several years where the average global temperature has been higher than the mean plus two standard deviations. In fact, starting around the 1st of June 2023, Global temperatures have been well beyond the two standard deviations above the mean. By subtracting out the data from land areas on the previous chart, the Climate Reanalyzer produced this chart of global sea surface temperatures, excluding the Arctic and Antarctic regions. The dashed lines have much the same meaning as in the previous chart, except that the averaging has been done over a 30 year period instead of a 20 year period. The results show clearly that the surface of the oceans has been warming as time has gone on. This is not particularly surprising since the oceans absorb much of the excess heat produced by global warming. What is surprising is the degree to which the sea surface temperatures have warmed this year compared to previous years. Climate scientists believe that at least part of the excess warming this year is the result of lower emission of sulfate particles from ships plying the ocean, caused by the recent implement, implementation of regulations requiring ships to use low sulfur fuel oil, along with lower volcanic activity this year, which also has contributed to lower amounts of sulfate particulates over the oceans. The sulfite particulates reflect some of the incoming solar radiation, so removing them from the atmosphere allows more of the solar radiation to reach the surface of the oceans. This chart from the University of Maine Climate Reanalyzer is particularly interesting. 
it shows the deviation of the annual global average temperature from the 100 year average of global temperatures from 1901 to the year 2000. The baseline represents the 100 year average global average surface temperatures. Each data point on the chart represents the amount by which that year average global temperature deviated from the 100 year average. The deviation is called the temperature anomaly. The vertical scale is in degrees centigrade. What is most obvious from this chart is that the planet has warmed rapidly since the mid 1970s to the point where average global temperatures are now more than a degree centigrade warmer than they were in 1880. The Arctic has been warming at a considerably faster rate than the rest of the planet. One of the reasons for this is the loss of sea ice. As this chart from the reanalyzer shows, Arctic sea ice has been declining, and the decline has speeded up since the year 2000. When sea ice is lost, less sunlight is reflected from the Arctic Ocean area. That in turn leads to faster warming and even less sea ice. This positive feedback effect is one of the reasons why the Arctic is so rapidly warming compared to much of the rest of the planet. In addition to providing charts of important climate data, the Climate Reanalyzer produces images that help you to visualize what the climate data is telling us. This image of Arctic sea ice coverage on the same day of the year when the ice coverage was at a minimum in both 1980 and 2012 shows in dramatic fashion what climate change is doing to our planet. While I've devoted most of this video to the information that the Climate Reanalyzer provides about climate change, I want to close by commenting briefly on the weather forecasting tools available on the Climate Reanalyzer. The Reanalyzer provides several different weather forecast maps that you might find useful. In addition, it includes a tool which allows you to obtain very detailed 10-day weather forecasts in convenient graphical form for locations here in the United States, as well as locations around the globe. This weather forecasting tool uses data from the nearest available weather station to the location that you choose as input to the reanalyzer's weather model to provide a very detailed forecast in convenient graphical form. To get the forecast, just click on the Today's Weather Maps link on the reanalyzer's homepage and enter the location in the box that says Enter Place Name in the upper right corner of the page. If you are in a remote location here in the United States, I found that the forecast tool works best when you enter your zip code followed by the name of the state. For example, when I tried to get the forecast for Baker, California, a very small town in San Bernardino County, the reanalyzer gave me the forecasts for Bakersfield, California. But when I entered the location as 92309 California, it produced this chart shown above. Thanks for watching. I hope you have found this video useful and informative. Please visit the University of Maine Climate Reanalyzer and explore its features for yourself. If you have any comments or questions, please include them in the comments section and I will do my best to respond. Thanks again for watching. I hope you found this video interesting.